What's going on guys, Tom here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to import your 3D models from Blender into the Godot engine. So let's get started. Okay, so you can see I've got Blender open here, and I've opened up one of my 3D models from the Ludum Dare project, and we're gonna get this imported into the Godot engine. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the file menu, I'm gonna go down to export, and a lot of tutorials out there would have you choose the Collada format, the .dae format. That is still fine. However, the Godot engine now recommends the GLTF 2.0 as the format of choice. GLTF 2.0 is kind of like the successor to Collada. It's built by the same sort of group, uh, as far as I'm aware. It's supposed to be an open format like Collada was. However, Collada had a few issues and GLTF 2.0 is trying to fix a lot of those things. So GLTF 2.0 is the way that we're gonna be exporting our model today. So we'll click on GLTF 2.0. On the right hand side, you've got a bunch of options for how you want to export this. Now if we expand include, you can see that we have a selected objects checkbox here. If we were to select that, if I just move this out of the way slightly, the only thing that would get exported is the top of the turret here, and that's because we have it actually selected you can see that we don't have the body selected. However, if we just leave that as default, which is unselected, um, then this will export everything in your Blender scene. So we're gonna leave it like that because we want both the head and the body. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export it here into my 3D Assets folder. You can see I've already done this here, but I'm just gonna do it again. So export GLTF 2.0, and that's it done. So that is exported now as a GLTF file. We're gonna minimize Blender, we're going to open up Godot and we're going to create a brand new project here. So I'm just going to create this in my code with Tom folder. I'm going to call it 3D whoops, 3D Playground. Create folder, create and edit. Okay, so let's create a 3D scene. And what we're going to do now is we're going to open up our file browser and we're going to browse to where we saved that turret file and you can see I have it here turret.glb I'm just going to drag that in to my file system over in the Godot engine and you'll see instantly here that we now have the turret glb file but we also have a palette underscore zero one material now the reason we have this if I just quickly jump back to blender is that you can see we have this texture here and it's assigned to this object in the material panel of Blender itself, and I've called it palette underscore zero one. So Godot has successfully recognized that there's a texture assigned to this model, and it's imported that as well, which is fantastic. So what we could do is we could simply drag the turret.glb file into the scene, and you can see here we have a turret, it's its own scene, and that is fully textured, it's ready to go. However, this isn't the best approach. What we do want to do, if we just delete that node, is double click on the turret.glb file and it will say that this was automatically imported and can't be modified. So if we want to make changes to this model, um, we have to create a new inherited scene. So we're gonna click on new inherited button. And what that will do, you'll see that we're in a new scene now, it's unsaved. We have turret as the top level and you can see that inside it, we have the turret body and the turret head, the two separate pieces and we can move them about individually. And this is great because now what we could do is we could go over to the turret head and we could rotate it and we can add scripts to this or particle effects or any other nodes that we want into this scene just like we would as normal. So if we just save this as turret.tscn, close this scene, and then instead of dragging the glb file in, we're going to drag in the scene file. Now we have our 3D model imported into the scene as its own scene that's completely customizable, which is fantastic. So if I just move this out of the way, I'm gonna show you one more thing that you can do here. So as you saw before, this turret is in two pieces. We've got the head and the body. Now, if I wanted to import this from Blender into Godot as two completely separate meshes, rather than this one scene that we inherit from with the locked pieces together, what we can do is if we click on turret.glb file, we come up to the import tab, you'll see here that we have a bunch of options here for how we want to import this mesh. If we click on the preset tab, you then have further options, which are presets of all of these configuration options for different purposes. 
If you come down to the import with separate objects and click on that and then press re-import, you'll see that that popped up there, it re-imported the file. And if we look down in our file system, we now have two separate .mesh files. We have a turret body .mesh and a turret head .mesh. So if I drag this into the scene, you'll see again, it's fully textured, it's ready to go. Let's just drag that out of there. And again, the head one, if we drag that in, again, fully textured, ready to go. And now they are two completely separate meshes. The other benefit to doing it this way is that these pieces are actually just mesh instances rather than a whole scene with the two pieces locked together. So you can do whatever you want with this now. This is a great option if you want to have a Blender file that has a bunch of different environmental props, all with their own materials, and actually you just want to import them as completely separate meshes so that you can dot them around your scene as you want. Now you'll notice here that these two meshes are now no longer aligned because I've just dragged them into the scene. However, if we come up to the turret body, we go into the transform and we reset it by clicking the little reset icon there. Do the same thing for the head, transform, reset. You'll see that they've reset to the exact position that they should be in, just like this one over here. And the reason for that is that in Blender itself, we have our origin point set to the base of the turret here. And that's the same whether or not we have the base of the turret or the head of the turret. The origin point is the exact same. Now that might not be the case for you, if you find that you're importing your pieces into Godot and they're actually misaligned or rotated funny or they're scaled incorrectly, then what you can do is in Blender itself, if you press A to select everything, then you press Control A, we'll get this apply pop up here. What you want to make sure you do is press apply all transforms and then save that and then re-export the file. And that will ensure that all of the transforms that you've done uh, or rotations or scaling is applied to the model itself and that will then come across into Godot. And that's it for today's tutorial. I've showed you a really quick way to import your Blender models into the Godot engine and I've also showed you how to import them as completely separate meshes which is really useful if you have multiple props in a single Blender file. If you enjoyed this video please click on that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. I release new content every single Monday so make sure you don't miss out. If you'd like to support this channel, I also have a Patreon, the link for that is in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.